Hi everyone, Mr. Fig back again. Uh, just a short lesson this week on rays and intensity. So let's get going. We've discussed several different types of waves in this class. We started discussing mechanical waves, uh, and then we talked about sound waves, which are a specific type of mechanical waves, and then now we've been talking about light waves. But all waves are, are really energy in motion. A wave is how the universe transmits energy from one place to another. Now, consider this photo of a rock thrown into a pond. Well, when you throw toss a rock into a pond, the energy of the rock is converted into the energy of the waves that we see on the pond. Now, the ripple, what we see is the ripple, is actually the peak of the wave moving outwards. We call the peak of the wave a wavefront. And in here, in this picture, the wavefronts would be circular as they move out across the surface of the pond. Uh, the distance between those wavefronts is really a peak to peak distance, and that would be a measure of the wavelength. Now, the energy of the stone is transformed in this energy carried by the ripples moving outwards. Uh, I would like some way to describe that motion um, so we can then easily indicate which way the energy is going. Now, although we see the disturbance, that is the bending of the water as the ripples move out, it's important to remember that the real essence of the wave is the energy that it carries. So uh, keep that in mind as we look at these waves. Uh, we're really concerned with where the energy is going because that energy can affect the world around it. Now, I'm going to describe the motion of these wave fronts as they move outwards with a vector that we're going to call a ray. So on the screen you see a picture of the surface of some water. We're looking down on it. Now I'm going to cast a stone into that water and we'll see that ripples travel outward. As the energy moves outwards creating these ripples, these wave fronts moving outwards, I'd like to represent, I can't always show a movie, so if I just look at the static image this way, it's hard to know what those wave fronts are doing. So I'm going to draw an arrow. I'm going to draw vectors to show that these waves are moving outwards. So some things you can notice. Uh, these vectors are all drawn perpendicular to the wave fronts. Um, and that is uh, how we draw a ray. Um, and it points in the direction that the energy of the wave is moving. In this case, ever outward. Now this is true for a wave on the surface of the water, but we'd like to apply this now to light waves. Now, unlike a pond where the energy is moving out and just across the surface in two dimensions, a light bulb is going to transmit the energy of the wave in three dimensions, all in the space all around the bulb. So these wave fronts aren't really circles. These wave fronts represent spherical shells. Uh, the energy of the bulb is going ever outward and across a larger and larger spherical wave, spherical wave front. Um, and this energy moves out at the speed of light. Again, I can draw rays to show that these uh, wave fronts are moving outwards. Now these are called light rays. And I can talk about the intensity of the wave. If you remember when we talked about sound, we said the intensity of sound wave was equivalent to the power that that wave carries spread over the area that we're spreading the energy. Same thing with light waves. The intensity of a light wave is equal to the power of that wave divided by the area, or power over 4 pi r squared, where 4 pi r squared is the area of a spherical shell. So the energy contained in the wave doesn't change. It's just traveling outwards and gets getting spread thinner and thinner and thinner. So as I move away from the source, the intensity of the wave drops because the energy is being spread over a much larger area. And that's what this image shows. In this image, I have the power of the wave, the source strength. 
and the intensity is power over the area, which is the entire area of the spherical shell. But here I'm just looking at pieces of it. Um, at one radius distance, whatever, one radius distance, I can I can look at the power being spread over this little square. But as I go further, if I go uh, out twice the radius, you'll see I'm spreading the same energy of the wave front over a much larger area. So as we move out, I start with intensity over a small area. Then I'm spreading that in power over four times the area. And then at three times the radius, I'm spreading that power over nine times the area. So this is, that means that if I double the distance from the source, my intensity doesn't get cut in half. My intensity gets cut by a quarter because I'm spreading the same energy over four times the area. That is, the intensity falls off as one over r squared. Triple the distance, the energy is gonna fall off by a factor of nine. Quadruple the distance, the energy is gonna fall off by 16, and so on and so on and so on. All right, that's it. Uh, so we've worked problems like this before with sound, but let's just uh, do some practice now um, with intensity of light. All right, here's a couple of practice problems. Uh, number one, what is the intensity of a 60 watt light source two meters away? Assume all the power of the light goes into the wave. Now that's actually not a good assumption. Uh, when you use a 60 watt light bulb, the 60 watts represents the power you're gonna need to draw from the wall when you plug the light in. Um, only a fraction of that power is actually going into, into the light itself. Uh, and you can tell this because light bulbs will get hot. Um, so, but for our, these problems, we're gonna assume that all the energy is going into the light uh, for the sake of, of our calculations. So let me turn on the pen. All right, so I would like to calculate the intensity. So as we discuss, the intensity is going to be equal to the power of the wave spread over the area, which is going to be a spherical shell, 4 pi r squared. So that's going to be equal to, in this case, 60 watts. Again, this is assuming that all the energy is going into the bulb, into the light. Uh, a lot of it is actually going into heat. 4 times pi times 2 meters squared. So if I take out my calculator and do a quick calculation, I get that this intensity would be equal to 1.19 watts per meter squared. And that's the intensity of the bulb measured two meters away. Question two, what is the intensity of light when it's measured three times further away? Well, there are two ways to go here. Uh, we could be clever. I am tripling the distance. That is, I'm taking an intensity that was measured one over r away and I'm now going to be measuring it 1 over 3r away. But I have to remember that that's 1 over r squared and 1 over 3r squared. That means that this is going to be equal to 1 ninth. Whatever the intensity was at 1 over r squared. So the intensity is going to be equal to 1 ninth. 1.19 or 0 0.133 approximately uh, watts per meter squared. Now, if you're uncomfortable uh, working with 1 over r squared this way, um, I could just calculate 
the intensity with six meters away. If I do that, I can go back to the equation. I can say that intensity equals power. Oops, sorry about that. Let me erase. Intensity equals power over 4 pi r squared. And this will be equal, well, the power of the bulb hasn't changed. That's still 60 watts divided by 4 pi. But now I'm going to need 6 meters squared. And again, if I use my calculator, I'll see this works out to the answer we got above, 0 0.133 watts per meter squared. Okay, that's it. That's all we have for this week. Again, it's a half week due to the vacation. Um, you're expected to work three of the five days, so take your time, watch the video, uh, work on the questions, um, and I'll see you online. Till next week. Bye.